You're watching Friday Night Football Fever with Pete Byrne and Carl Deppenbaugh. Presented by TCU. The hits start now. Good evening and welcome to Friday Night Football Fever on WSBT 22. No Pete, no Carl. I'm Adam Derangowski flying solo tonight. So glad you could join me for some exciting high school football action. There are just three games left in this high school football season, which means there are major conference implications on the line tonight, especially in the Northern Lakes Conference. Plymouth and Concord tied atop the NLC at 4-0. Rocky still playing with a heavy heart. As you, there you see the 23 painted on the 23-yard line for fallen teammate David Bacon. Plymouth struggled offensively. Quarterback Jack Barron scrambles, trying to find a receiver. Still nothing, still nothing. Finally, he's going to loft it up in desperation. And there is Concord Cedric Mitchell taking it away. He's going to move the ball up to the 16 as that is going to set up this play. From the 10-yard line, it's Avis Emmons. He gets the handoff up the middle, makes a few nice moves, and he is in there for the touchdown. Minutemen go up 7 to nothing. As second quarter, Jason Grooms drops back and throws an absolute dime to guess who? Cedric Mitchell. He intercepted one, now he scores one. Concord upsets the second-ranked Rockies 35 to 6 as they now sit alone atop the NLC. South Bend, Washington on a four-game winning streak, taking on Bremen, who holds their own in the NIC. Tyler White rolls out to his right and connects with Anthony Brazier, and this dude has speed. Follows his blocker, and he is ghost. 70 yards, and he's going to finish like a true sprinter does. 31 to 12, Panthers taking the lead, and White had an absolutely killer game. He drops back here and finds Justin Peregrin, who taps both feet in bounds NFL style. White had a bevy of touchdowns tonight as Washington dominates 48 to 18. Time to break out the Cumberbund Bund. I know I have mine on. It's homecoming time as Adams taking on Elkhart Central at school field. Second half, Central's Ross Kirkton drops back, but gets hammered by the big fella Noah Daniels. The ball pops out, but the refs have ruled Kirkton was down by contact. That drive would stall for the Blazers. Defense got it done. Now it's the special team's turn. A short punt from Central. Everyone stops, seemingly thinking it went out of bounds. But it's Tavante Malone who scoops it up and goes 80 yards for the touchdown. Adams dominates tonight, 48 to 24. Scores from elsewhere around Indiana. LaVille beats Glenn in a tight one, 14 to 7. Northwood wins 14-5 over Elkhart Memorial. And Northridge beats Goshen 21 to 7. Then up north of the border in Michigan, Edwardsburg dominates South Haven 57 to nothing. Portage Central spoiling homecoming up in Niles 56 to nothing over the Vikings. As we now head to the biggest game in the Northern Indiana Conference. Marion with their best start since 1998. New Prairie, the new kid on the block, and the NIC South title is on the line. New Prairie has won two the last two meetings against the Knights. Jacob Whitfield back on the field for Marion after spreading his MCL. But it was the Cougar rushing attack that ruled the day. Quarterback Nick Brassel keeps it himself and carries it 70 yards well into Knights territory. He would score a few plays later. He had one heck of a game. Brassel on the QB keeper again, takes it into the end zone. New Prairie shocking the Knights, but it was Marion trying to make a run as Whitfield on the handoff. And he looks good, as good as new as he takes it in for the touchdown. But the Cougars would hold on to win this one. New Prairie deals a shocking loss to Marion, their first 28 to 21. Jimtown holding opponents to just 10 points a game, hosting winless Riley at Nep Field. And it's a high snap by Jimtown on their very first drive. Riley going to pounce on it. Nick Giroux on the recovery. As the very next play, Trevor Omak connects with Harrington Greer for the deep touchdown. Great catch there by Greer. 6-0 Riley. But it was all Jimtown from then on. Kenny Kern going to take the handoff. He's going to shake. He's going to shimmy his way all the way inside the five-yard line. You can't stop him. He would go on to score two plays later as Jimtown dominates 52-9. The 1996 State St. Joe State Championship team was honored at halftime of today's game between St. Joe and Mishawaka. Even Father Bly there in attendance, hoping the magic is going to rub off. 
It worked just before the half. Mishawaka threatening. Darian Phillips throws out to his right, but there to make the play is Danny Chamutu. The interception would stall the caveman drive, but things would go hairy from there. Kyle Kalea back to punt a high snap. He's going to bobble it, and Austin Faulkner gets a piece of it. This one is going to be down inside the 25-yard line. You can't give him field position like that. That would set up this play. Phillips fakes the handoff and pitches it out to Greg Burns, who waltzes in for the touchdown as Mishawaka wins this one by a final of 48-14. to 14. The 6A number two pin on the road at Clay Field. Colonial looking for their first win on senior night tonight. First possession for Penn. Harvard-bound Camden Bone rolls out to his right and flings it to his tight end Nolan Metcalf for the touchdown. Penn takes an early lead. Another possession and another score. Bone drops back and lofts it over the middle to John Olson in stride for the touchdown. Kingsman goes, uh, the Kingsman go up 14 to nothing. It was nice once, so why not try it again? Bone lets it rip to a streaking Olson, 25 yards for the touchdown. Penn rolls. 55 to nothing. We got to take a quick timeout, but make sure you don't go anywhere. We name our prestigious Bell Tire Play of the Night. Plus, Pete Byrne gives you everything you need to know to get ready for Saturday's showdown in Death Valley. Friday Night Football Fever rolls on next.